What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Super excited to be at Consensus 2024, interviewing a multitude of builders across Web3. Equally excited to have the individuals from Easy A with us today. We've got Phil, we've got Dom. Phil, I would love if maybe you could just give us a little bit of an overview of uh, some of the initiatives that Easy A is contributing into the Web3 space. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having us on. Easy A is Duolingo for blockchain. It's a mobile app that allows anybody to learn about the world's best blockchains just with a push of a few buttons. So we partner with pretty much every major L1 and L2 out there from the A's of like Aptos, Algorand, down to the S's of Sui Solana and everything in between, of course, XRP Ledger being another big one. Um, and of course, other ones like Polkadot um, and others. So really, it's about making education on blockchain very, very simple and focused on developers. Dom, how long have you guys been doing the developer advocacy? I mean, we're here at Consensus. Obviously, you've got a bunch of developers from a bunch of different networks now. But talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the initiative as you guys kind of started this and then maybe kind of the evolution of where you guys are at. You know, right yeah, now. definitely. So we in, uh, launched EZA three and a half years ago now. Um, and since then, we've been working with, you know, pretty much every major layer one, layer two out there. Um, but we really started with the goal of making blockchain fun and easy to learn for anyone. Um, so making it really easily accessible, making it really easy for people to get started as opposed to having to, you know, maybe go on the website, scroll through docs, which, you know, pretty much um, no one has the motivation to do uh, when they're just getting started exploring a new field. And, you know, today it's been a massive success. We just hit 1 million developers globally um, in our ecosystem. And so it's uh, it's been really cool to see the engagement that people have both in the app, but also in in person events. So, you know, coming to these great hackathons, 500 plus builders here um, and, you know, typically hundreds of builders at different hackathons we run every month. Um, and it's really good to see the excitement and innovation happening in these ecosystems and seeing those projects also continue building beyond the hackathon, uh, not just winning the hackathon itself. Yeah, and I'm really interesting about kind of interested about kind of the builder journey too. I mean, what are some of the really cool projects or initiatives that kind of stick out to you that have come out of these hackathons and how have they kind of been cultivated? Um, as, as far as, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming some have won grants and there's, it's really kind of yeah. bootstrapped out some of these, uh, ch probably change, changing people's lives, yeah. right? Yeah, I love this question. We've had so many amazing companies, startups come out of the EZA community. Combined valuation over the past couple of years is really a two and a half billion dollars. So a huge, huge amount. Most recently, uh, we had a student from Harvard dropped out, raised couple of hundred million from founders funds. So that's Peter Thiel's fund. Now the company is valued at $2 billion. Oh my they gosh. started off just literally pitching at one of our hackathons. They were just like everybody here. Obviously here we are at the consensus, well, the EZA consensus hackathon. Just were no different from any of the other people here pitching their idea up on stage. And then, yeah, little more than a year later, they've got this huge unicorn. Well, wow. unicorn twice over. Wow. And I've got to imagine, too, it's really interesting for you guys, you know, doing this for a few years because all of the tooling and infrastructure that's on these different networks, it's not like that just like is kind of at ground level. Like these, yeah. there's additional toolings for these developers to use and onboard to make their journeys easier and more seamless. Like what has that transition, you know, been like for you guys to kind of watch? Yeah, it's been amazing. I mean, every time, you know, we launch a new challenge, for example, uh, you know, maybe half a year later or even a couple of months later, the tech stack maybe has changed or there have been different changes to the actual code. And, you know, seeing all of that take place, different pivots as well within different chains we work with. Obviously, now everyone's focused on AI, so we're trying to incorporate more of those elements, show people the use cases in AI, uh, gaming, what have you. Um, so it's really cool to see the different sort of uh, use cases that each chain is focused on. And overall symbolizes how wide spanning the uh, the blockchain space is and, and you know seeing all of that happen in real time at the code level is super cool because obviously you know our engineering team is working with it every day across all these different ecosystems and being able to have a bird's eye view on uh, on what's happening in the landscape is super cool i've got to imagine too uh, kind of in that same vein like the pulse of the industry because it consistently just you know shifts yeah. I mean, there's tons of traditional developers out there. I, I went to um, the Python uh, summit a couple of weeks back, and uh, Algorand was the only blockchain there, which yeah. was interesting to watch. Yeah. And there's like millions of, of Python developers. Like, what has that, when you guys look at Pulse of the industry, where we're at right now, like, how early are we as far as, you know, how many developers are out there that you feel like are going to be coming into the blockchain space to learn about some of the initiatives and hopefully through you guys? That's another great question. We first got started in 2013. That was through Bitcoin mining. So back then, 
the number of builders was just absolutely minuscule. Really, the way that the vast majority of people interacted with, with this was through mining. And so that's what really kickstarted a lot of the industry. Obviously, a lot of technical yeah. people, a lot of people building their own forks. So we had a lot of different coins being created and different blockchains being created from, you know, Litecoin to Feathercoin, you know, all sorts of different altcoins. It was like altcoin era, right? Uh, one of the first altcoin eras. Flash forward to today, the way that people really engage with these blockchains is through developing on them, right? So the number of people build, you know, actually mining, I'd say is, you know, small, it, it, it at least, at least nowadays, it feels smaller, right? It feels like where the activity is and where the excitement is, is really about building rather than, you know, mining the stuff or running their own database. That's more like, you know, base level technical infrastructure, which seems to have been sorted out. Um, builders, this is where it's still happening. Um, and I think for us as well, just seeing that where developers are focused, where developers are excited about, it's the ability to build new primitives, new dApps that you know actually reach people. And in particular today, we're seeing that we've got this new wave of consumer dApps, which is coming through. And that's what we're seeing at this hackathon too. Yeah. So for example, our partners at Stella, um, you know, people are building you know, on their cash to DeFi track. So that's mobile apps are building consumer facing stuff. Sui, of course, very, very focused on the consumer side um, and just have some amazing experiences that you can build with that. So I think it's a mixture of both. It's like the technology advances, the builders advance as well, and the two come side by side and there's a symbiosis where now they're able to build new products because of the technology that enables them. Only a couple couple questions left for you guys. And it's just, I feel like there's like a little bit of kind of synergy where like we talk to a lot of different ecosystems and chains and I know how hard that can be sometimes because it yeah. seems overwhelming because there's so much going on. Why did you guys choose to go the route that you went? Because I know we see, you know, developer advocacy and sometimes it's kind of just one network. Why did you guys choose to kind of, you know, do the developer advocacy aspects in a way that it's going to grow the entire industry pie? Yeah, I mean, well, to start off for the reasons you said, you know, we want to grow the whole space as opposed to just one particular chain. And ultimately, learners learn best when they're presented with a multiple uh, different array of opportunities. So, you know, we can't just fix one ecosystem in their minds because any smart person is going to start to wonder, okay, well, what else is there out there? You know, no one's going to just say, okay, this is just the only thing out there and that's all I'm going to learn. Then they're going to go to another platform. So for us, it's really important to show them as much as we can in the EZA app, get them excited about different ecosystems and then actually go forwards. Um, and, you know, going forwards, they can actually then continue their journey deeper down the funnel uh, on their own. But it's really important for us to be the homepage of Web3, so to speak. So anyone can tap into any one of those different chains in the app and then start to begin their journey. Um, so that's that's why we decided to go multi-chain. And I think you're starting to see that as well across the industry. People aren't just building dApps on one particular chain. They want to have a variety of different chains um, because you know you, you can't tether yourself necessarily to one ecosystem in that respect. And if you want to have the biggest impact, you got to show people everything out there, not just you know one one thing. Yeah, I think there's you know what it's been interesting to watch. You know, some of these ecosystems that have been around for a handful of years have that baseline level of infrastructure now that, you know, they do want to start outreach in the multi-chain yeah. aspects. Yeah. I think that's what we're seeing, especially with the ones that have been around for, you know, a few years or exactly. so. Exactly. want to ask both you guys as we close out here, what is the biggest milestone that kind of sticks out to you or maybe a couple of them? And then talk a little bit about what you're excited about in the future for EZA in, the, in, this, in this space. I can go first. And really, the big milestone that we hit this week was million developers. Wow. So we now have a million developers within the EZA community yeah. uh, who are learning about Web3. And to come back to your earlier question, it's not just Web3 developers. Of course, big thing about what EZA does is it brings net new developers to the space. So people who come from Web2, people who are you know, just exploring these technologies for the first time. What I'm excited about is taking that you know, even beyond 1 million. What happens when this really, really, really starts to get into the mainstream, number one? And number two as well is, of course, since we have these million developers in the top of the funnel, what do they build next? Over the past couple of years, they've, their companies are already valued at $2.5 billion as a combined valuation, which is massive. But you know, if we look at the life cycle of a venture-backed startup or just a normal startup, one and a half years um, or two years, three years, is still just the very beginning. So what happens when we look five years, 10 years beyond? How does that $2.5 billion grow? Um, it's, you know, it's going to be stratospheric. That's awesome. Dom? Well, I think the space is evolving so fast. And I think, you know, 
from our perspective, seeing all of these different chains launch is super exciting because it means that we have new content to teach people about, new areas to focus on as well. Um, and seeing how you know AI, for example, gets combined to blockchain, um, you know how we decentralize AI, for example, how we put data back into people's hands is also super exciting. So we have a couple of big launches actually coming out soon uh, related to that. And yeah, excited for, uh, for everything to come and obviously excited to watch the pitches later today at the hackathon. Awesome. And then just last but not least, tell us where we can find out more about EZA, Phil. So find out more about EZA, you can go to our Twitter at EZA underscore app. And you can also follow Dom and me. My handle is Quark underscore Phil. And Dom's is the other way around. Dom awesome. underscore Quark. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Again, we are uh, honored to have the opportunity to interview EZA. And then Phil, thank you so much for joining us thanks today. Thanks for having us Dom, on. Thanks as thanks well. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.